All right, uh, so let's take a look at a power supply circuit. Here's a transformer, and of course this is AC, and we need to turn the AC into DC. And so we're going to use a diode, and that will just take all the positive things and let them through. We'll charge up a capacitor, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be done with it, okay? So uh, I'm going to be using this box that I made some time ago. It, I call it my test transformer. It's just a transformer that I can use to test circuits out, and it's just always dedicated as a test transformer. So it's got two center tapped windings, one that's 8 volts and one that's 20 volts. We'll be using the 8 volt side. And I'm going to be connecting the uh, I'm going to be connecting our little circuit here to the zero to eight. So I'm only be using the eight one little eight volt section of the transformer. Okay, so should we should be getting somewhere around something around eight volts, right? Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, try this out. We'll go ahead and turn on our oscilloscope, uh, and we'll turn on the power. And there we go. Uh, so I will change the, uh, there we go. So we have two volts per division. So two, four, six, eight, ten, and a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and turn on some measurements here. Uh, and I will turn on the voltage max and the voltage min. All right, so it's 11 volts. Uh, is the uh, is the uh, reading there now? So uh, all fine and dandy. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load this thing. Okay. So we're going to put a uh, we're going to put a resistor here on the on the output. Okay. So I'm going to put a hundred ohms on the output, and we'll see what that does to the waveform. And whoa, look at that. Let me move my trigger point up. Um, so uh, it is uh, charging up to the maximum, and then uh, there's a, uh, the, the smoothing capacitor is falling off, and then it charges up again, and then it's falling off. So this is the ripple of the power supply, right? And um, the frequency is 60 hertz. Um, so why does that do that? So you have a... Uh, a waveform that's that's a sine wave and the rectifier will take this part of the waveform and it will charge that capacitor and then it has to wait till over here so where it starts charging again so in between it's going to fall and then it gets to charge up again and then in between it's going to fall all right and uh, that's what's happening here all right so uh and because it's only on the positive peaks of this uh, hello, positive peaks of this waveform, it's 60 hertz because it's one complete cycle before it gets to do it again. So this is called a half half wave rectifier because it's only using half of the wave. All right. Okay. So uh, let's look at a different circuit. Let's look at this circuit. This one you'll be more familiar with. This is a, a bridge diode and um, it's hooked up to the same transformer and the same uh, res uh, same um, capacitor. And let's see what that one does, okay? So we need to uh, come over here and we need to move the uh, transformer over to the other part of the circuit. And I'll move my scope probe over, turn that on. And let's see what we got now. Uh, we've got 10 and a half volts, so it's doing exactly the same thing as before. And then if we load that one down, uh, and move my trigger up a little bit, uh, you can see that uh, it's doing it faster, and it's 120 hertz. Because that, we have both the positive and the negative part of the sine wave that we get to use. So you can see this is going to be much more efficient, right? We're using twice as much of the waveform as we did before. So this would be a 120 volt ripple. And that was, again, with a, a, resistor, a resistor here, okay? All right. Um, now, this video, I think a lot of people have already seen things like this. But what this video, what I want to get across is... Um, 
I haven't said what was ground and what was positive. I haven't said positive and negative. I haven't said any of that, okay? And that was because I want to teach something. And that is that if I draw a symbol here, I draw this ground symbol here, okay? Then he says, oh, okay, we know what you're doing there. Here's ground, here's positive, and everything's working just fine, okay? And um, uh, we've done that. We've connected the scope probe net ground to this side, and we've measured that side. So it's a positive voltage on our, on our oscilloscope, okay? Um, all right. All right, now there's nothing from keeping me from doing this. I'm going to put the ground on this side. There's nothing that says I can't do that. Okay? And in fact, we will do that. All right? So how do I do that? Well, it's mostly semantics. <laughs> okay? Um, I'm going to take my ground probe, my ground lead, and I'm going to connect it on the wrong side. And I'm going to connect the... Uh, oscilloscope probe to the wrong side and let's see what happens up here uh, let's see here let's uh, move it up here so now I gotta move my trigger down it's just upside down okay here's ground and we've got negative volts okay um, if I take off the load we have negative 10.2 volts and if I put the load on, it just does the same thing, but upside down, okay? So it's, it's just semantics. Now I get to call this minus V, and I get to call this minus V. They're negative, but they still operate exactly the same way. And what I want you to start thinking about isn't, when usually when you draw power supplies and stuff, you just stick in the ground and then you don't stop, you stop thinking. You just stop thinking, okay? What I want to talk about, though, is this path. The path that, that is a circle, and it goes around and around and around and around and around, okay? It's, it, the current flows in this circle, and over here, it flows in the circle. It flows in the circle. It flows in the circle. It goes round and around and around and around, okay? And we can draw arrows. It's always going in this direction, okay? It's always going in this direction. Okay, and it doesn't really matter um, if you call something ground or not. It's this loop, and it's, it's up to you what you want to call negative and positive. Instead of ground, okay, we can just call this uh, zero, or we can call it return, or we can call it uh, plus V. We can have plus V and minus V. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want, okay? Wind doesn't matter. The only time it matters is, now I have a big mess here, but the only time it matters is if you have a earth ground, okay? So if you have an earth ground and you need to connect that to something, well, that might limit you. Or if you have two of these, one of them is going to be a positive voltage and one of them is going to be a negative voltage and they're going to have a shared ground. And then you have to worry about this stuff, okay? But um, think, about, think about these circles. The current's going this away, current's going this away. It goes from this side to this side. You can call this the plus side and this the ground side. You can call this the ground side and this the minus, minus voltage side. It doesn't matter. And um, you get into trouble when you stop thinking about these return paths, all right? All right, let's take a look at one more, just because I have it on the breadboard here. This is another uh, another way that you can do these power supplies, okay? This is also a full wave rectifier. Um, it's gonna use both sides of the, of the waveform, the positive side and the negative side, but it does it by using the center tap transformer. Now these aren't very efficient um, uh, circuits because they only use half of the transformer at a time. It uses that half of the transformer and then it uses that half of the transformer, but it doesn't use them at the same time. So you're basically having a transformer twice the size that it needs to be. Um, and so these um, used to be quite popular, but these days everybody just uses bread, uh, bridge rectifiers. Um, but yeah, so let's hook up one of those. 
All right, so I've hooked up the uh, uh, the other one to the uh, the eight zero eight. So I'm going to be using that transformer that we've already used. We've been using one half of it, and I'm going to be using both of them with the center tap. Okay, uh, just like just like here. Before we were only using this portion of the. Uh, oops. We were using this portion of the transformer, and now we're going to be using both both halves of the transformer. It's not going to have any more current. It's just going to be less efficient. Um, and we're getting our 11 volts back. Okay, it's doing exactly before. And if we load it down with 100 ohms, uh, we get the uh, move my trigger up. Uh, we get the same picture as we did before. It's a full full uh, full wave rectifier, 120 hertz, doing exactly the same thing. So. Uh, this circuit here does the exact same thing as the bridge circuit, but you need a center tap transformer. So yeah, so just do it. Just do it the other way. Don't worry about that. But you might you might see it in circuits, but yeah, this is the way to do it.